one one two three five eight four three seven one eight nine eight eight seven six four one five six two eight one nine welcome this month's you and hellion for the church of the sacrament is on sex and sensuality interesting subject i know pretty intense and you'll see that those that spoke this week they had their intensity to share so uh sit back enjoy thank you for joining the church of the sacrament in this month's you and hellion sex and sensuality I'm so honored to be here on behalf of Church of the Sacrament to be talking about sex and spirituality, our sexual being. Um, you know, I know I've been so changed by just truly embracing the fact that my life is here as a result of sex. It was a sex life that created my life. I am a being of sexuality. And now I get to own my sexuality. I get to honor it. I get to, you know, really see the treasure of, of being open and vulnerable to myself. To be so willing to look and embrace, not just on a physical level, all of myself, but on this really deep emotional level, to look in all the cracks and all the crevices and really just unearth every part of my being and say, I love it and I see it and I I just, you know, just all the juiciness of it that I just celebrate. Um, and the minute I really came to that place, my sex life with everybody I engaged with uh, was so much different because I wasn't putting up shields and blocks and walls. And I realized in place of boundaries, in place of like actual healthy, well thought out, structured boundaries, I was just like blocking. I was just blocking everything. And so I was missing so much of these like incredibly awakened sexual moments because I had so many blocks and things that were just like, I was cut off to myself, I was cut off to other people. Um, and when I just like opened up fully to myself and was willing to be like, okay, I'm gonna open up to other people. And I may have boundaries, I may say like, um, this is not all right, but this does work for me. I'm a yes to this, I'm a no over here. And that was a different type of structure a structure that I found rather than just shielding and cutting things off and that was the game changer in my sexual life and why I am so excited to teach people about being in love with yourself and being vulnerable and the immense power that comes with being vulnerable and how that just awakens your sexuality in this spiritual way that is just so much more intimate um, and I am an intimacy architect. I do believe that we create, we craft, we build these foundations of ourselves, of how, you know, our spirit is this ethereal thing. It needs to have this structure. It needs to have this form of the body that it animates. And so if we really work with the form and work mentally and work on this nervous system level to build this amazing structure where we can fully be intimate with ourselves and then show up and like invite people into our space and, and share space in this way that is both spiritual and sexual because we are sexual beings. So this month's You and Helene is on sex and sensuality. And uh, sex is pretty private to me. So this may be a pretty short you and Helen for me. For example, I'm tempted to, you know, say in the background of the shot, you know, there's the temple dome we just put up uh, this past Saturday out here in the meadow. And uh, there's a composting toilet bathroom back there that beautiful people put together and all that. But uh, the topic is not composting toilets, the, co the compost. <laughs> the topic is sex and sensuality. It might start raining again too, by the way. I've been out here building a fence and it started raining. I think it's coming in again. How appropriate, wet. Sex can be pretty wet. Actually, sex is something I like to refer more to as making love. Um, and sensuality can be pretty wet as well, you know? As well as, uh, yeah, sensuality, eye-gazing, clothes on like a white tantric event, uh, sharing a meal with someone, 
feeding uh, a date dipped in coconut cream to me for the first time was one of the most sensual experiences I've ever had with a friend. And uh, yeah, let me start with the history. So, okay, so I was raised in Christian land. I've shared that in some previous UN Hellions. And I was taught, you know, sex was very shamed. Of course, in the within the confines of marriage, it's, you know, anything goes, I guess, whatever's um, agreeable between the two. Um, but there are certain rules. It's really not. There are certain, certain uh, boundaries that they set that I applied to. For example, masturbation is like, you know, more than two decades just was not in my experience. And coming out of that nearly eight years ago, uh, I felt like I had been pinned up and I jumped over the fence and uh, here comes the wet. And uh, just uh, discovered a lot of freedom to express myself in, in, uh, in many ways, including my sexuality. And so now, as I've settled into making love, <clears throat> and I have a beloved, and uh, while well, I've been up here working um, on the property in the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, I've been missing her a lot. And it's really an intimate connection for me, uh, sex making love um, you know you're you're naked you're vulnerable in so many ways and, uh, and and again in Christianity they also taught me um, that the two become one flesh and I really think that part's true I mean there's some things I've retained from my upbringing in my practice for over 40 years but um, I really believe that's true. The two have become one and it's okay. And it's okay to connect and, and be one with someone. And to be, but certainly to be conscious about it. It's totally sacred. It's not just fucking. I mean, seriously, um, okay, there's love fucking, whatever. There's many beautiful expressions, right? But for me, it's, it's the slow. It's, it's the build up. It's, the waiting, the energy that cultivates. Yeah, and sex can be defined as a lot of things. I know a lot of things, there's some uh, rain on the lens there. There's a, uh, it's all about definitions, right? How we define things and, you know, two people can be talking about the same thing, but how do you really define what that thing is? And sex can be a lot of things. Um, and sensuality can be many things as well. I, I am a very sexual person, and as I mentioned, I'm very private about that. So going on camera saying this, my stalking mother finds this, whatever. Um, I've fallen out of her grace already anyway. God bless her heart. But, uh, Yeah, it's just so, so beautiful. And I'm looking forward to making love out here in nature. And hearing the birds, sunrise, sunset, water, wind through the trees, wind is my friend. It's just... Ah. <sighs> Makes me excited because I'm gonna head back home to see her tonight and, uh, and bringing all this beautiful energy that I've cultivated out here in nature, integrating it into my own practice and bringing myself to her in that, into that sacred space. I'm also so in love. I've, I've loved much of my life, but I've never been in love. I've known that. And I am now, and, and it just adds so much more. I mean, when there's, when there's love, the sexual intimacy is 
so much more. There's so much more opening to be penetrated, um, both of us, and um, all of us. Sharing all the, all the wet that comes with the expressions with each other and it can be very bonding, very bonding. Just rubbing your juice all over each other is just so beautiful, so beautiful. So I guess I can say that here, it's a topic, sex and sensuality. Um, That's all I have to say. Wow, look, there's a dome. <laughs> Thank you. It is an honor to stand before you and present my UN Hellion on sex and sensuality. Sex and sensuality, it's such a core aspect of living, of being an individuated point of awareness, of being a human being. And it's funny that I plan to, uh, let's just do it. I love anime. I love anime. That art form is an epic manner by which story is told. And the story is that vessel that allows for us to capsulize life in little nuggets so that we can then explore it and understand it. Right? Story allows us to take a situation and put it in the abstract so that we can really digest the relationships involved. And then in that understanding, we apply it to the specifics and we glean deeper, deeper awareness, a deeper level of understanding. And so story allows us to really embrace and engage our own lives. So in watching anime, one of the reoccurring characters or aspects is the thing about the male character that desires sensuality, desires sexuality, desires intimacy, desires physical contact and gratification, that male character, and then there will be outlets, female characters or love interest characters that are completely open to that person's desires, who would, that would be grandly fulfilled if character A were to act on their desires, were to initiate the activities that would fulfill those desires, the receiver is more than willing. So we have a situation where we have a character with desire, the desired character, all agreeing that the desire and the desired <clears throat> both mutually des want to fulfill those desires. Yet that instigating character, that the what is typically the male character, can't do it. He feels internally restricted from being able to grasp and take hold of that which is being freely offered. <laughs> it's symbolized a lot by a character busting out into a bloody nose if they're in the presence of a naked woman or if a woman attempts to kiss them or shows them affection, the male character will just boom! nose bloody and just falls out, right? <clears throat> and I would think that it was funny, right? I'd watch it and I would laugh. But a portion of me didn't quite get it. I thought to myself, 
it must be an aspect of Japanese culture. That there's a certain restriction um, that's built in to the civilized man so that they can't act on their righteous desires. Sexuality, sensuality are righteous expressions of what it is to be human. And what's expressed in this character is a blockage in that flow of that righteous sexual sensual energy. So what I, uh, I thought that it was due to the Japanese culture that there was some kind of repression and that that repression was being spoofed upon and that's why it was funny and that it didn't quite transmit into Western culture because you know we are so voracious you know what I'm saying like we look at a woman we're like yeah what's going on like <laughs> not quite but similar right like that was my attitude that was what I thought about myself but what's so funny is when a lesson is being shown to you it's rare that you understand what's being shown when it's being shown I recently had some interactions with my partner, with my Nina, that showed me something about myself that I hadn't acknowledged and I was unconscious of. I love my woman. I love her dearly. And extremely attracted to my woman. My woman is devastatingly beautiful. I love making love to my woman. Her body feels like magic in my hands. It literally sparks imaginations and hallucinations of cacophonous joy. Like, I love being with my woman. I mean, that's why she's my woman. Yet I found myself at times resisting my own desire for her. I mean, literally, I am that male Japanese anime character that has this beautiful partner, beautiful woman <clears throat> that is ultimately desirable, that desires me, that I desire, yet somehow something in me was inhibiting my ability to express that desire. And it was that inability to express that desire that affected her. Here I am locked in my own head. And me being locked in my own head and not giving and expressing and sharing my sensuality, my desire, my sexuality with my partner forced her to evaluate herself. And it made her think that I no longer desired her. And if I no longer desired her, it was because, of course, she must be undesirable. I mean, what else? And if she's undesirable, it's because, well, <clears throat> she must be worthless. She must have let herself go. She must have dropped the ball. This entirety of a thought process get set into motion because I was unable to engage my own desire, my true and righteous desire to make love to, to embrace, to be with my woman. The desire that exists and is in me was somehow being thwarted internally not allowing me to fulfill or express or 
act upon that desire <clears throat> and that inability to act that what's the word when you cannot <laughs> that impotence then led to a destructive pattern of thought that my Nina had to endure. Now, I did not cause Nina's destructive pattern of thought. There are aspects of this that are not under my control. But it is clear that if I were to find within myself the ability to act righteously on desires that are pure and good and ultimately human. And if I did act on those desires and shared that with my Nina, her life would be that much more fulfilled. <clears throat> when I began this UN Hellion, when we started talking about the idea of this UN Hellion, my ideas of what I was going to share were going to be far more conceptual. But as I stood before this camera, I realized that if I'm not giving you my soul, if I'm not giving you the honest reaction, the honest distillation of my experiences, then it's not my UN Hellion. It is not my news if it's not about me, if it's not from my soul, if it's not every bit of truth and honesty that I have to give. This is the desire of the open mic ministry. This is the, the desire of the Church of the Sacrament. This is the desire of the UN Hellions. So that each of us will present our honest, open-hearted souls, our honest, contemplated expression. And we share it in such a way that it's archived and that future generations can learn from our growth. We can become elders to beings who haven't even been born yet. Right? The, it's our job to speak and encapsulate our truth so that others can learn therefrom. <clears throat> this, this project, this sex and sensuality UN Hellion is one of the most informative activities that I've taken upon recently because I feel that it is pointing me in the direction that my soul wants to travel and when I find that direction it feels like inspiration I'm inspired to share with you I'm inspired to create a container so that you can share this is the Church of the Sacrament. This is the purpose of this. And this is... <laughs> this is my UN Hellion. Thank you for watching this month's UN Hellion on Sex and Sensuality. Amazing and intense and personal. The whole point is for all of us to share everything that we have, or as much as we're willing to share, so that we can all grow from each other. Next month's You and Hellion will be on ritual. Ritual. How do you incorporate ritual into your life? How do you personalize ritual so that it is uniquely yours? How does the term ritual fit in Right? Like, there's a lot of skeptics and atheists that are members of the Church of the Sacrament. How does that term even affect their lives? Right? Like, being on the fringe 
means that a lot of people who don't necessarily share ideas would share the idea that we each have to find our own idea. And so we give each other the space to find it. That means atheists and spiritualists will walk hand in hand. There's a story, it's an Indian story, about how all the tribes would get together and the different shaman would take turns telling their story. And after each shaman tells their story, the other shamans would be like, man, that's a good story. I like how it covers X and Y, right? And then they tell their own story, and they're like, man, that's a good story. I like how yours spoke about water and spoke about rain, right? We each have our story. And the point is for us to sit down and share our stories and come up with a common one. No arm twisting. Everything is voluntary. Take on what resonates, leave what doesn't. So, thank you for watching this month's You and Hellion. Next month we will have the topic of ritual. Please, I invite anyone who wants to submit their You and Hellion to send a message to the Church of the Sacrament through the Facebook page. There's also a website, but it's easiest to contact us through the Facebook page. We look forward to contact and submissions. A little bit of a teaser, uh, April 1st we will be having our first home temples, our first temple gatherings in Nashville, Tennessee. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you again for watching this UN Hellion. We will close with one, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven, one, eight, nine, eight, eight, seven, six, four, one, five, six, two, eight, one, nine, one, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven, one, eight, nine, Eight eight seven six four one five six two eight one nine one one two three five eight four three seven one eight nine eight eight seven six four one five six Two eight one nine. Namaste. Anoka Church of the Sacrament.